O Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The first psalm is Psalm 30, beginning on page 363. I will magnify thee, O Lord, for thou hast set me up, and not made my foes to triumph over me. O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. Thou, O Lord, hast brought up my soul from hell. Thou hast kept my life from them that go down to the pits. Sing praises unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks unto his holy name. For his wrath endureth by the twinkling of an eye, and in his favor is life. Heaviness may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. As for me and my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. Thou, Lord, thy goodness hast made my hill so strong. But thou didst turn thy face from me, and I was troubled. Then I cried unto thee, O Lord, and gat me to my Lord right humbly. What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pits? Shall the dust give thanks unto thee? Or shall it declare thy truth? Hear, O Lord, have mercy upon me. Lord, be thou my helper. Thou hast turned my heaviness into joy. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness, that my soul may sing of thy praise without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second psalm is Psalm 32, beginning on page 366. Blessed is he whose unrighteousness is forgiven, and whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth no sin, and whose spirit there is no guile. For while I held my tongue, my bones consumed away through my daily complaining. For my hand was heavy upon me day and night, and my moisture was changed as with the drought of summer. I acknowledged my sin unto thee, and mine unrighteousness have I not hid. I said I will confess my sins unto the Lord, and so thou forgavest the wickedness of my sin. For this shall every one that is on thee make his prayer unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. When the great waters overflow, they shall not come nigh him. Thou art a place to hide me in. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. I will inform thee and teach thee in the way wherein thou shalt go. And I will guide thee with mine eye upon thee. Be ye not like a horse and mule which have no understanding, whose mouths must be held with bit and bridle, else they will not come nigh thee. Great plagues remain for the ungodly, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord, mercy embraceth him on every side. Be glad, O ye righteous, and rejoice in the Lord, and be joyful, all ye that are true of heart. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first lesson is written in the book of the prophet Jeremiah, the 36th chapter beginning at the first verse. In the fourth year of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Take a scroll and write on it all the words I have spoken to you concerning Israel, Judah, and all the other nations from the time I began speaking to you in the reign of Josiah till now. Perhaps when the people of Judah hear about every disaster I plan to inflict on them, they will each turn from their wicked ways. Then I will forgive their wickedness and their sin. So Jeremiah called Baruch, son of Neriah, and while Jeremiah dictated all the words the Lord had spoken to him, Baruch wrote them on the scroll. Then Jeremiah told Baruch, I am restricted. I am not allowed to go to the Lord's temple. So you go to the house of the Lord on a day of fasting, and read to the people from the scroll the words of the Lord that you wrote as I dictated. Read them to all the people of Judah who come in from their towns. 
Perhaps they will bring their petition before the Lord, and will each turn from their wicked ways. For the anger and wrath pronounced against this people by the Lord are great. Baruch, son of Neriah, did everything Jeremiah the prophet told him to do. At the Lord's temple he read the words of the Lord from the scroll. In the ninth month of the fifth year of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, a time of fasting before the Lord was proclaimed for all the people in Jerusalem and those who had come from the towns of Judah, from the room of Gemariah, son of Shaphan the secretary, which was in the upper courtyard at the entrance of the new gate of the temple, Baruch read to all the people at the Lord's temple the words of Jeremiah from the scroll. When Micaiah, son of Gemariah, the son of Shaphan, heard all the words of the Lord from the scroll, he went down to the secretary's room in the royal palace, where all the officials were sitting. Elishama the secretary, Deliah, son of Shemaiah, Elnathan, son of Akbor, Gemariah, son of Shaphan, Zedekiah, son of Hananiah, and all other officials. After Micaiah told them everything he had heard Baruch read to the people from the scroll, all the officials sent Jehudi, son of Nethaniah, the son of Shelemiah, the son of Cushi, to say to Baruch, Bring the scroll from which you have read to the people and come. So Baruch, son of Neriah, went to them with the scroll in his hand. They said to him, Sit down, please, and read it to us. So Baruch read it to them. When they heard all these words, they looked at each other in fear and said to Baruch, We must report all these words to the king. Then they asked Baruch, Tell us, how did you come to write all this? Did Jeremiah dictate it? Yes, Baruch replied, he dictated all these words to me, and I wrote them in ink on the scroll. Then the officials said to Baruch, you and Jeremiah, go and hide. Don't let anyone know where you are. After they put the scroll in the room of Elishama the secretary, they went to the king in the courtyard and reported everything to him. The king sent Jehudi to get the scroll, and Jehudi brought it from the room of Elishama the secretary, and read it to the king and all the officials standing beside him. It was the ninth month, and the king was sitting in the winter apartment, with a fire burning in the fire pot in front of him. Whenever Jehudi had read three or four columns of the scroll, the king cut them off with a scribe's knife and threw them into the fire pot, until the entire scroll was burned in the fire. The king and all his attendants, who heard all these words, showed no fear, nor did they tear their clothes. Even though Elnathan, Deliah, and Gemariah urged the king not to burn the scroll, he would not listen to them. Instead, the king commanded Jeremiel, a son of the king, Sariah, son of Azrael, and Shelemiah, son of Abdeel, to arrest Baruch the scribe and Jeremiah the prophets. But the Lord had hidden them. Here endeth the first lesson. Guided by God, Jeremiah dictates a message of warning to the nation. Baruch writes the message on a scroll, which he then reads publicly in the hope that the people might heed Jeremiah's warning and repent. This causes much alarm, and King Jehoiakim insists on reading the scroll himself. He is enraged by the contents of the scroll and destroys it. Jeremiah escapes the attempt to arrest him and sends King Jehoiakim another scroll, which foretells doom and destruction for the king and his people. The gospel is often uncomfortable for us, but the eternal word of God will endure forever, regardless of our attempt not to hear it or silence it. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and, and my, my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath hope in his servant Israel as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. <clears throat> the second lesson is written in the Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter, beginning at the first verse. 
I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends, for everything that I learned from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name the father will give you. Here endeth the second lesson. Jesus is the vine, and his followers are the branches. If we do not bear fruit, God the Father breaks us off from the vine, and we die spiritually. Let us never turn away from Jesus, who is our life and salvation. Furthermore, Jesus tells us that we are his friends. Imagine, friends with God. But not because we have chosen him, rather, he has chosen us. Jesus has loved us to the end and desires us to remain in his love. Thus, obeying our Lord Jesus' command to love one another is the only appropriate response to the saving love which he has freely showered on us. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according, according to thy word. word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thy inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Grant, O Lord, we beseech thee, that the course of this world may be so peaceably ordered by this by thy governance, that thy church may joyfully serve thee in all godly quietness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all the holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, 
that our hearts may be said to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. O Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come unto thee. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen.